Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 51 webinar of the BioExcel webinar series. The, the talk of today will be on multi-scale QMMM simulation, in particular exploring chemical reaction using a novel interface between GROMAX and CP2K. The presenter of today is Dimitri Moros Morozov from University of Ivescola, Finland. I'm Alessandra Villa from the Royal Institute of Technology, and with me is Julian Singh from the University of Edinburgh, and we are hosting those, this webinar. Uh, about the presenter of today, so Dimitri received his PhD at the Moscow State University in 2013, and he, in Moscow he was working on the development and application of QMMM methods, on particular on biological systems. In 2013, he moved to Finland, in particular to the University of Eskola, to work in the group of Gerrit Grunov. There he was doing a postdoc, and in 2015, he received a grant from the Academy of Finland to go on his postdoctoral post research. In 2019, he started to work within BioXL, and in particular in the implementation of multi-scale method for performing simulation of chemical and biological system. Now I will give the word to Dimitri. Uh, good morning everyone and welcome to my webinar. So today I will talk about the new developed uh, Gromox uh, CP2K interface, which I have developed over the last couple of years. And I will show how to use uh, it to uh, make a QMM, sim QMM simulation using Gromox and CP2K. So, uh, but first, let me speak about what is QMMM and why do we want to use the QMMM in particular. So let's think about the biological systems. So if you want to model a typical biological system, usually it consists uh, of a large number of atoms, yeah, usually proteins, something else, they're much more including also the <clears throat> water box around them. They're typically much, much bigger than the 10,000 atoms, let's say, yeah. in, in particular that case, it's around 40,000 atoms. And uh, if you want now to model, uh, use a classical molecular dynamics, no problem, you can do that. Modern uh, MD packages like Gromax, they, they can do it easily. But the problem comes when you want to model some reactivity inside the system, chemical reactivity, photobiological reactivity, whatever. And here comes the problem that uh, for typical system for QM, QM simulations, which need to be used in that case, because your electrons, electronic structure starts to change, it's usually a very small system. So maximum, typical maximum number of atoms in current uh, QM, QM, QM simulations is up to 200 maybe maximum. Uh, yeah, and here comes the problem. So how you want to solve that? You want to model full biological system like that, but uh, with electronic structure methods, or quantum mechanics, you can do only small systems like hundreds of atoms. So, and the solution here is called multi-scale approach or QMMM. So the idea here came uh, like already in 1980s and 19, uh, 1980s and in 2013 it received the Nobel Prize. And uh, the solution is the following. Let's us divide the system in the two particular parts. One will be uh, simulated with, in which actual chemical reactivity happens, should be simulated uh, or calculated with quantum mechanical methods. So uh, yeah, density functional theory or ab other ab initial methods. And uh, the rest of your uh, biological or big, big system will be modeled with a standard molecular mechanical force fields at force field level of theory. And the kind of, of course, the, in the details, if you look into the details and the question arises, so there should be some interface between uh, those uh, parts, yeah, and there should be some interaction between these parts to be taken into account. So what these interactions could be, we'll show following. So uh, let us say that uh, interactions within the particular QM region, of course, you always can do with straightforward QM description with wave functions with base sets and so on. Also interactions purely within MM region will be stay the same. They still, still be on the force field level. But actually what is uh, most important here is 
how you want to calculate interaction between QM and the MEM uh, sub, sub regions, yeah, or between QM and the MEM particles in particular. And uh, the answer is the fall. And here you need to solve for two particular uh, things. First one is how you want to couple the uh, calculate or calculate the coupling between uh, quantum region and molecular mechanics region. So there is several class of methods, first called so-called mechanical embedding. In that scheme, it's usually also called subtractive scheme because uh, in that type of schemes, your total QMM energy is calculated as a full uh, MM energy of full system minus the MM energy of your QM region, uh, calculated basically yeah, on the MM level. And then you add on top of that uh, just contribution from QM uh, calculation. But in that case, your QM will be kind of in a gas phase. So there is uh, the drawback, of course, is that the QM region does not feel any charges or electrostatic field from the MM region. That's why the was introduced as next type of the coupling scheme is so-called electrostatic embedding. And uh, in electrostatic embedding, of course, the uh, polarization uh, uh, from the molecular mechanical point charges is taken into account polarization of uh, quantum mechanical wave function is from the mm point charges is evaluated and this is also so called additive scheme so because now you calculate just a mm uh, system with kind of empty space inside it <laughs> and then you add on top of that qm uh, calculation in the presence of the mm point charges around there is also a third type, which is now just rising. It's called polarized embedding. But for that, you probably need to use uh, polarizable force fields. And this is not so uh, usual for now nowadays. But then in, in that case, you also take into account uh, polarization of a MEM part due to the QM part and vice versa. So it's kind of a fully self-consistent scheme. But it's not so usable uh, as for now, mainly because lack of the force fields. Okay, uh, this is about the electrostatic. Uh, what should happen with electrostatic in QM1? But what about the bonded interactions? For example, in the following case, you also break in the bonds between, uh, there is a broken chemical bonds between QM and MM regions. And of course, this causes some consequences. Yeah. So first of all, you need to deal some, somehow deal with the force field parameters on that uh, bond, broken bond. Second, you need to deal with uh, broken bonds itself. So because for example, for QM uh, subsystem, the broken bonds means a dangling electron, which will, uh, which is not so good. And for that, there is several schemes again available in literature. So, and the most usable one is the first one. It's so-called uh, capping or link atoms. So basically, what it means that uh, on the bond connecting on the bond uh, which which is which was broken, we introduce a new. Uh, quasi atomic center. Quasi, I mean that it's not presented as a real system, but it just presented the QM actually system. Uh, and usually this is a hydrogen atom, which just effectively caps this uh, dangling bond. And, uh, and uh, it also fully, uh, fully go into the, for example, self-consistent self field of your QM region. So it is presented in the QM region, but it's, its influence on the total system then just subtracted. So the force from that atom, it just goes over this to atoms, which it connects. Uh, and there is some other approaches, like instead of the real link atoms, you can use also pseudo potentials to cap that valence, or you can use some hybrid orbitals, frozen orbitals. But the most general method is usually link atoms. And here, let me present what, what, what has been done by me and my colleagues over the last years. And there is a, a Gromach CP2K interface to perform QMM simulations using, of course, Gromach as the MM driver and CP2K as QM driver. So I, I will tell you here a bit. Uh, so why we using Gromach is, of course, obvious because we are by Excel. Uh, that why we decided to use CP2K for that is uh, kind of uh, a good question. And the, and the answer is that first, uh, both of them are freely available software. So we want them to be freely available to everyone. And second, uh, CP2K, one of the programs, one of the not so many programs, which allows us to perform a fully periodic QM calculations and QM simulations. And what this interface basically is doing, uh, from the Gromach side, 
the Gromox is a main driver. So all integration of the trajectory or minimization or other methods is done in the Gromox. Gromox is also responsible for all MM interactions within the system. And CP2K, what, what CP2K is doing, it just uh, uh, first performs QM simulation and second, it performs electrostatic uh, embedding. So basically coupling between QM and MM. And uh, let me go a bit through these uh, terms in the energy, which we want to, uh, uh, which we want to calculate in a typical QMM simulation. So first is the force field, as I said already, it's done in Gromax, and it is standard for any standard force fields you can use. So yeah, it's it's comprised of the bonded and non-bonded interaction terms, and bonded interaction of course is bonds, angles, dihedral, torsions, so on, and non-bonded is of course Leonard Jones interaction plus a columbic interaction uh, between the MM, MM particles only. The next, uh, what 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 CP2K is doing? So the QM routine of CP2K is called quick step, and what it is doing basically is this is a very interesting thing because it use uh, combined it not use not just a standard Gaussian Bayesian set like everyone using like 631G uh, or CCPUD set or something like that. No, in, in addition to that basis set standard basis set, it also uses a, a reciprocal uh, or kind of plane wave basis set auxiliary kind of thing, which allows uh, that method to uh, calculate periodic system. So like shown on the right slide. So basically now have fully periodic. And how it is working, it <coughs> uses so-called multi-grid, real space multi-grid approach. So basically it's, guess, initial guess of the density is taken from the Gaussian basis set. That Gaussian is projected onto the multi-grids, uh, real space multi-grids. And then you construct your Consham matrix, Consham operator, and energy functional. You then you uh, do a very efficiently FFT because it can be done very efficiently if you build your grid properly and pass this uh, density into the reciprocal space in which you can account for long range electrostatical interaction, basically between the images usually. And <coughs> thus you can obtain a new density matrix. Which you can, which can then can go and be optimized in the CF cycle again and again, until your full energy is, uh, until your energy is is converged. And uh, how then the CP2K treats uh, QMMM coupling, electrostatic coupling? It's also very interesting approach, I can say. So it uses so-called uh, JEEP or Gaussian expansion of the electrostatic potential approach. So and what it is basically doing now you want to include effect of these point charges into your QM region, which is represented by the number of multigrids. So it's basically, yeah, it's basically grids. And <coughs> instead of doing normal Columbic operator, like one over R here with a density, they use so-called smearing, smeared uh, potential. In reality, it is, error it is standard error function over R, like potential. But what is interesting later, it is expanded as a sum of several Gaussians, the potential is expanded as a Gaussian, plus some very smooth, uh, uh, very smooth, uh, like a, re a remnant function, which is so smooth that it can be efficiently treated in the reciprocal space. So, <laughs> and of course, that Gaussian can be mapped directly onto the real space grids. So, in, so it's indeed uh, really like quick step is doing, but now you are doing this also by including the effect of the MM point charges of the QM region. And uh, of course, uh, this can be done like periodically, but uh, if you think now that you want to calculate your real system in fully periodic MM box, full MM box, <coughs> then the problem arises that of course it projects everything onto the multi grid of the QM box. And of course, your, now your quick step can calculate this kind of system. But unless your QM and the MEM boxes are the same, you have a problem with periodicity because uh, that system which you calculate is not the same as it was initially. Yeah. Unless your, of course, boxes are the same, as I said. And to deal with that, uh, we are using also a very tricky approach. So uh, called a block scheme. So what is basically doing? It is fits into uh, once you converge your wave function, 
you fit into that density electro uh, into that uh, density uh, charge density basically your uh, some uh, point charges uh, which can uh, reproduce the multiple uh, multiple moments of your uh, QM system and then you simply do the uh, evolve like decoupling and recoupling. Basically, you first calculate with evolve, evolve like summation uh, just the energy of one system. Then you shift every system in the position where it should be, and then you recouple them back. So you basically play this fully classically, like electrostatically, uh, just by shifting this thing. Okay, and <coughs> how the simulation flow now looks like in Gromax. So when you think about the Thermal molecular dynamics like uh, workflow, simulation flow, it is looking like that. So you read, you want to read your input parameters, all coordinates, velocities, yeah, all that kind of parameters. Then you want to prepare your simulation, you want to set up your domain decomposition, you want to set up PME and everything else, boxes and so on. And then you calculate your energy and forces. <coughs> then you integrate your trajectory usually, apply ensemble couplings like temperature, pressure, and so on. You want to solve constraints. And after the constraints, you just basically write any output if you want. Then you can adjust your parameters, I, and you are doing that cycle until your simulation will finish. And uh, what is interesting in Gromax that we use uh, so-called MD modules framework uh, to to make this QMM addition to put additional forces into that additional forces due to QM, QM and QMMM calculation. And this is done like that. So basically what it is do, uh, there is a number of modules available now in Gromax even, like for example, pooling or density guided simulations. But at each step, the MD modules framework, it passes that simulation data uh, to each of the MD module. And then it gets back the energy and forces from that. So, and, and return it back, it adds it back to the all uh, total energy and total forces. So why, why it is a good approach? Because, well, it's much less dependent and more encapsulated kind of things. And yeah, your main driver is no, knowing basically, and as it should be, knowing nothing about actual what you're actually doing inside each module. And it's much easier to integrate and maintain. Okay, but now, as I said, like it seems like very simple or maybe not so simple, but anyway, uh, now, comes the next question. So why then no one is using the QMMM or why so low number of researchers using it? For, as for that, we conducted uh, early this year a questionnaire or survey uh, from the high profile scientists. So, and we asked them, uh, first, did they use uh, any QMMM simulation during their research? And only half said that like, yes, we use. The other said like, no, we know, we not, but there was some difficult uh, that is a triad, but it was not successful, or then uh, considering that, but do not know how to do that exactly. So, and the next question was, which issues have you hindered from using QMLM? And there was a number of things, like uh, mo most of the people do not know exactly the background in the QM theory, because usually to perform QM simulations, you need a lot of knowledge. And uh, they do not know uh, suitable parameters for a particular program, and uh, they want the more tutorials and so on. This is, uh, every 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 of these things we can solve is in BioXL. And uh, yeah, our idea here we need we definitely need need to make our interface simpler to use. So and I will show you that on several uh, couple of of examples how to use that, and it's really simple. So let's us first go with a typical workflow for the biochemical QMM modeling. Usually it looks like that. So uh, first you take some system, usually from the PDB database, yeah, or whatever. You can take some coordinates from crystal, from crystallography, from cryogenic structures. You need to fix everything which is missing from your system, residues, protonation states, uh, add box, and so on and so on. And then you want to perform your, probably your MD equilibration thing. Uh, so then you put the box into the Grom, so that box into Gromox and just do some dynamics, uh, do production run, search for the good geometries. And uh, then uh, what you want to calculate, for example, you want to calculate some reactivity. And here it is very easy with our new interface. So you just need to add uh, 
you need to define the group of atoms which will be your QM atoms in the index file of Gromax. And you need to put a couple of parameters, it's really a small number of them. And then you can perform a QMM calculations. So it can be the geometry minimizations, ab initial molecular dynamics, born Eppenheimer dynamics. Uh, you can go do umbrella sampling, you can do calculate even absorption spectra. Uh, so yeah, but the thing is that it is very simple in a way, but we still want what we want to achieve. We want to achieve that the advanced users, they also uh, want uh, to modify everything. Yeah, usually to adjust parameters, standard parameters and so on. And we want them to be able to do so. Uh, so how it is working, uh, basically on the first step, of course, when you're going from MD simulations to KMM simulations, you need to change really your topology. And this is already not so simple usually. But in our interface, it is done pretty straightforwardly and uh, automatically. So when you're doing so, what the interface will do for you on the Grom PP even level, when you create your TPR file, uh, it will first remove all partial charges from the QM atoms, because here yeah, you don't need them. Uh, you remove all Leonard Jones interaction between the QM atoms, but you keep them with the MM atoms. So, you remove all bonds within the QM region, bonded interactions. You remove angles, which connects contains two or more. So, for example, this angle, uh, uh, this angle will be cut. Uh, will be removed basically. Uh, you remove all the hydrals, which can, contains three or more QM atoms. Uh, you also want to clean up, for example, if you have water molecule in your QM system, you want to remove constraints, which usually applied in the MD simulations. And finally, you want to uh, make a link atoms and you want to generate input files for the CP2K. This is done automatically now in the interface. Mm. So there is some features which now support at the Grom PP level. So there is sample setup for QM parameters which should be suitable for more, many biological systems. Uh, there is Compatibility with most of the simulation techniques, which is now available in Gromax, maybe with exception of the FEP, because in free energy perturbation you need, yeah, you have a several topologies and that is much more complicated. Uh, it's compatible also, of course, with any Gromax tools, because what you will produce will be completely in Gromax format. So any third party tools or Gromax tools can, uh, can be used to analyze your trajectories. And it also, of course, supports the highly parallelizable simulation methods like umbrella sampling, AWH, pooling simulations, and so on. Uh, let me show you so how it is set it up. So it's really easy to use. So you take your system which you use for classical MD simulations. Then in the index file, you define the group of atoms. Here it's called QM atoms, which should be your actual QM part. You set the QM active uh, flag to true which activates uh, that module. You also can choose uh, some of the preset parameters for some methods. For example, here it is uh, PBE, which means PBE with double zeta basis set. Uh, there is a number of them will be available and even now available, uh, but you can change it freely, I guess, if you want. And you also need to put charge multiplicity, of course, of your QM system, total charge and total, uh, total spin state, basically, of your QM system. And what you will get on the output as the output of Grom PP will be not one but three files. It will be a standard Gromox double.tpr file, which will be uh, your Gromox parameter file. And they will be also generated CP2K input file and CP2 and uh, PTB file with a split between QM and MM system, as well as this definition of point charges for CP2K. So basically, these two files are CP2K, uh, CP2K input files. In a standard simulation like that, you can throw them out. I mean, yeah, they are also saved within the TPR, so uh, you actually don't need them. But if you want to change something, you are really you are really free to do so. And with that three files, you already can uh, perform a QMM calculations you want. Okay, so uh, here is an example of the system. It's really like a very simple system. It is a GFP chromophore called HBDI. And it's in a box of uh, waters, deep 3 waters with sodium ion to neutralize the whole system. 
So the cam charge in that case, because it's anionic chromophore, it is minus one, multiplicity one. And here, uh, how it looks like the input in the Gromax. And uh, if you check also what will be the uh, what will be in the input file for CP2K generated during that, it will be like that. So you have here some header, and you have here the main sections for several. So and uh, just in case if someone don't know, so this section will set up DFT section will set up a CF and grid set parameters. QMM section will uh, set up your QM box, small box, and uh, Jeep and all that kind of link atoms and so on, which is connected to QMM. MM section will, here will be just defined that CP2K itself should not calculate any electrostatics between MM atoms because it's done by Gromax. And subsys is just a system definition like atom kinds, point charges, which is read from that PDB file, basis, Gaussian basis, and so on. Uh, what is in that PDB file generated for you by the interface will be this one. So it will be split between two residues, QM and MM. Yeah, and the names are in the following. And uh, in the last extended beta field, beta field, so-called, it will be the uh, partial charge. So for example, here it's definitely tip 3 pure water, standard charge. So let's go and try to first minimize, do an energy minimization with that system, which I showed before. Uh, here, what it looks like. So it is kind of trajectory, and here is step. So yeah, indeed, as you can see, the energy minimizes. Uh, and the second, after the minimization, what we want to do, of course, we want to do dynamics. And here is the dynamics. So here we use MPT ensemble. So we uh, uh, we uh, basically want to do it as 300 kilos one bar. So here is the dynamics and the graphs of temperature and pressure. So the post temperature and pressure couplings is working here, are working here. Uh, yeah, and uh, here for that system on the 80 cores, uh, so basically two nodes here, 80 cores, the, it was approximately 10 picoseconds per day, uh, calculated, so 10,000 steps, one femtosecond time steps, it's 10,000 steps per day. Okay, but if you say that, okay, I'm advanced user, I want to modify myself, can I do that? Or even I, I, I can manage to generate CP2K input myself. So can I do that? Yes, sure, you can do that. Uh, so for advanced users, we have, you still need to provide, of course, in the index file your QM uh, setup. So basically what is your QM atom, define which atoms are QM. But then you can put here your own CP2K input using QMM method input and providing input file via this option. And then it can basically be any input uh, which can evaluate any force you want. Uh, so uh, what, what should be in that input? Only that the force evaluation should be in that input. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, you can perform that simulation, no problem. Uh, and for example, such kind of simulation, there is a bit bigger system this is so-called phytochrome protein. It's also in the box of water. I just cut it out the box because it really, it's really big. And for that system, we wanted to adjust because the system was so really big. We want to adjust some uh, standard CP2K parameters so it can be more effectively uh, treating the, the, the whole box, which is really big. But for that system, we want to calculate that, uh, uh, that reaction of the chromophore inside that protein. So it's located here. So it is at some point on the photo cycle, there is isomerization going from that to that configuration. And we want to, to make the profile of that isomerization on the ground state. Uh, and we use some umbrella sampling for that. So basically this is coordinate of the reaction. And here is the profile. Yeah, looks pretty smooth. Uh, as for umbrella sampling, here it's used approximately 30 picoseconds per one umbrella. Uh, and uh, if you think like, okay, uh, I want to, to know how to use uh, CP2K for uh, how to set up advanced CP2K input options, we also made that within the BioXL. So thanks to Arno and Holly, they are made, uh, oops, sorry. They are made a uh, um, best practice guide on performing QMM with a CP2K. So there is a lot of parameters and explanations and com combinations and what each parameter is doing and some troubleshooting even for the uh, biological simulation. So thanks to them. And uh, yeah, I think that was almost the last slide. So 
of my presentation, so I want to have the following acknowledgement to Professor Green, Gary Grunov and Christian Blau from KTH who is helping with Gromax and some other people like Firefox Modi, Arno, Poli and Emiliana as the collaborators who have tested, made a lot of effort in testing and, and providing feedback. So uh, now I finished my presentation and uh, yeah, Q&A session simply starts. Alessandra. Thanks very much for that um, interesting talk. Um, so we've all, we have got a large number of questions. So luckily we've got plenty of time to um, go through them. Um, okay. Our first question is from uh, Adrian. Um, Adrian, I have, I do not seem to be able to unmute your microphone, so I will ask the question in your stead. Uh, our first question is, um, as I said, from Adrian, and is, uh, is the broken symmetry approach accessible in this QMMM framework? Uh, you mean a broken symmetry in the in the QM region? I suppose that what what he wanted to ask. Uh, yes, it is possible. So you can you can use a different spin state symmetry, and you even can provide your own uh, CP2K input file, uh, or you can modify the one which will interface generate for you to perform any kind of simulations. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Great, thank you very much. Our next question is from uh, Jogban. And Jogban asks, um, can a single QMMM simulation take advantage of both parallelization? And if so, do both Gromax and CP2K run in parallel using separate resources or how does it work? Uh, yes, so, uh... The idea for now, yeah, of course, uh, there is no point of running simultaneously Gromax and CP2K. So what, what's happening? The Gromax is the main driver. It, it's basically the Gromax simulation, but at some point, what will happen inside the Gromax? It just calls the CP2K routine uh, to calculate energy and forces, and then CP2K use all available computational resources to do a QM calculation and pass back the energy and gradient. So yes, both of them are. Uh, could uh, are working in parallel, uh, in parallel, I mean, in MPI, for example, environment, and both of them will use the full advantage of, of the MPI, yeah. Great, thank you very much for that question, uh, for that answer. Uh, our next question is from uh, Isabel. Uh, Isabel, I do not seem to be able to unmute your microphone, so I will ask the question in your stead. Uh, so there are two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we do a QMMM dynamic in excited states? And is it possible to run these with GPUs? Uh, so there is a two kind of questions. Yeah, first questions. Uh, for excited states, the CP2K is not the best program in reality. <laughs> so it's done, it's usually uh, doing the, it's usually designed to do the more like enzymology studies with, with uh, ground state. Uh, Definitely, the interface could be extended uh, to do also excited state simulations, but probably not with CP2K. So yeah, in the future, we, we are ourselves doing the excited state simulations, but we are usually doing them not with CP2K, but with some other programs. And this also regarding to your next questions, so uh, uh, about the GPUs. So for now, as I know, the only quantum code which can use effectively the GPUs, especially with excited state combina comb combination is uh, TerraCam. Yeah, but the problem with TerraCam is that it's not a free program, you need to buy it. And that's why it is not considered now in the Biaxel also. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely for myself, I would very, be very interested in doing so. So at some point maybe, but for now, the answer to your question is probably no. Sorry. Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, the next question we have is from Cheng Gong Hui, uh, who again, I do not seem to be able to unmute anyone today, which <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but any, anyway, regardless, the question is, uh, well, first a comment, 10 picoseconds a day looks very promising. Uh, and the question, how many QM atoms say. and how many cores? Can we get? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you can, you can, you can. So, how many atoms and how many cores I uh, use? How many atoms and how many cores for the simulations? Yeah. 
Okay, so for a very simple system like I've showed, like HBI, it was uh, like here. It is really not so big. It is like how many here? 20, 20 something, 25 maybe atoms. But the good thing about CP2K, it is not very. Uh, it is very good. It is very good scales with the number of atoms. So uh, because the number of atoms increases number of Gaussians, and CP2K is many grid code. So until you not increase the QM box your CPU scales almost linearly with the number of atoms inside that QM box. Once you start to expand in your box, it will slow down. Uh, so there is, should be a very good compromise between the uh, QM, uh, I mean the QM box region, so the, the, how big is your QM box. But uh, uh, 10 picoseconds here, it can be achieved, and how many cores here, I, it was done on the 80 cores, it's two uh, nodes with 40, uh, 40 cores. Uh, it was Intel Xeon something. It is quite new, but still Intel Xeon, basically from last year. I don't remember exactly, uh, but it's 80 cores. It can scale even further. Yeah, definitely until like four nodes, I think like it can scale. And yeah, I think I. Great, thank Oops. you Sorry. very much. Yeah. Um, our next question is from Andre Golovin, mm -hmm. who uh, I have been able to unmute. So, Andre, if you would like to ask your question, please go right ahead. Um, Andre doesn't seem to be able to ask their question, so I will ask. Uh, I believe they have two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one is um, to check. Uh, do I understand right that CP2K uh, is run by Gromax at each time step? And yes. their second question is, <laughs> does, yeah, the easy answer, yes. And yes. the second question is, um, CP2K writes gradients to disk, or does it pass through the mem uh, through memory? Everything is done through the memory. So it's another good, yes, it's another good thing about CP2K. They have a library-like implementation, so you can, in reality, it will be one executable file. It is basically Gromax linked against CP2K. So the whole CP2K is linked into the Gromax, so it is just going directly through the memory of one application. So you even don't have the different applications. It's one executable file, one application. It is going through the memory of that application. Our next question is from Santosh. Uh, okay. Uh, how is a QM MM approach uh, different from a uh, fragment molecular orbit vector? From what? Excuse me. FMO, FMO, FMO. Have you heard of FMO? Ah, fragment molecular orbital. Fragment yeah. molecular. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's completely different. Uh, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, this is QM MM approach. So FMO is fully quantum approach usually. Uh, so it means that you split your system into fragments and in each fragment you do a quantum calculation and then you combine everything into one huge quantum system. It's kind of divide, called divide and conquer methods. Yeah? Uh, here it's QMMM. So uh, here you have only one QM, I can say fragment in terms of FMO and everything else is just a point charges around. So it's really a different thing. And it's much faster, of okay, course, okay. because of that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Dimitri, again for that answer. And our next question is from Eleni. Uh, Eleni, your microphone is unmuted if you would like to ask your question. Hello, uh, I would uh, like to ask uh, if CP CP2K uses a subtractive or additive coupling scheme. Uh, the JIP, yeah, the answer is the following. The JIP, which is used by the CP2K, it's an additive scheme, but without the polarization for now. Yeah, but it's additive scheme. Thank you. Thank you again for that um, answer. Uh, our next question is from Mert. Uh, I am not able to unmute uh, Mert's microphone, but it's a very practical question. Is this already and currently implemented in Gromax? The answer is 
yes, we have an internal branch in the Gromax, which is which is working with that. Yeah, I, I showed you previously the example of simulation, so we definitely inside the Gromax already. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is some complication with um, uh, with uh, compilation procedure because we want to also keep it si as simple as possible for users. But I suppose that within uh, with the release of Gromax 2021, I will make a separate branch of the Gromax GitLab, which everyone can download and test, where 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 there will be a QMMD module away, uh, activated. So, and everyone who are familiar with compilation procedures who can compile himself uh, he could do uh, he or she could definitely do that yeah the plan is the following for now great thank you very much for that answer um, the next question is from Tommaso who asks is it possible to use uh, metadynamics on top of Gromax with CP2K Metadynamics as a definition. So anything which is implemented in the Gromax, you can use. Uh, as for metadynamic side, well, I, I'm strongly disagree that someone should use it. It is very low, uh, slowly converging method in reality. In Gromax, there is much better method called, called AWH, which is kind of a pretty much very accelerated kind of that approach, bias, bias force approach. And I suggest to use that. But yes, this is possible. I mean, any any biased simulation, except of FEP, uh, it is possible to do with that interface. Yeah. Great, thank you for that. Uh, the next question is from Suman. Uh, Suman, I do not seem to be able to unmute your microphone, so I will ask in your stead. Um, is it required to generate the MM parameters for the QM region as well? And if yes, is there a recommended procedure for doing this? So uh, the, the answer is the following. If you want just to do QMM simulation, no, you, you don't need to do so. You can just, if you can, you can just define it in Gromax as an empty, basically, uh, region, empty what I mean, with zero point charges, with no parameters on the bones, the hydrals and so on, and it will completely work. Uh, but my uh, answer here should be also the following, that Usually, when you do that biological simulations first, before the QMMM, you want to do some molecular dynamics to equilibrate your system. Because in the crystal, your system is usually not in the same conformation as the solution. Uh, you should be very uh, kind of aware of that. And for that, you will need some molecular mechanical parameters. And But the good thing is that for most of the uh, non-standard biological residues, like chromophores, for example, uh, very good and suitable parameters could be generated by the AMBER tools from the GAF, basically, from the, using the general general Amber post field. So if you if you if you Google for the Amber tools, uh, uh, the GAF general Amber post field, then you can do that. You, you can generate parameters for your uh, particular molecule and do the MM simulation, MD simulation, basically, initially to relax your system. But if you want just to do QMM, yes, if you can. Define in your Gromax. If you in your Gromax topology, you can you will just simply make an empty bones and empty uh, zero point charges and so on on all QM atoms. You're free to go directly with QM. Great, thank you very much for that answer. Um, our next question is from Peter. Um, Peter, I'm unable to mute your microphone. It seems to be a constant today. Uh, and Peter asks, uh, starts by saying, thank you for your interesting talk. Uh, you've mentioned that you used PDB format to provide data for CP2K. Standard PDB format has a precision of three decimal places. Is this enough or does it add okay, a lot yeah, of noise yeah. to this? I see, yes, yes, yes. I see the, where the points come from. So I will show a bit uh, what he probably talks here yeah, about this kind of format. So the thing is, uh, for CP2K, uh, this, uh, coordinates is used only for the initial setup. Any further coordinates will be passed directly through the memory to the CP2K for the actual calculation. It will be passed through the memory and it will be a full double precision. So there is no problem with precision of the coordinates. And uh, for the point charges, uh, the CP2K can read them from so-called extended bit data field, which is not, which is starting in PDB, I think at the column number 81, if you check the PDB format. And then it can go indefinitely almost 
So the precision in the point charges here, it's six digits, but it's already more than enough usually. But for coordinates, you should not worry much because on each step of the actual calculation in CP2K, the coordinates will be provided directly to CP2K uh, in a full double precision. Yeah. Great, thank you very much for that answer. Um... Our next question, uh, we're, we're nearly through the list, by the way, just, just in case you. <laughs> um, but our next question is uh, from Hao Jiang. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question is, can CP2K find transition states? Uh, CP2K itself can find transition states, the question. <laughs> if you want to, you do that, yeah. Uh, CP2K by itself can do that. If you're talking about the, uh, the interface, the Gromax have no for now capabilities to do the transition states, except of one. You can do umbrella sampling. In the umbrella sampling, you can you can find that. Uh, so you can do umbrella sampling uh, on top, for example, or you can do first a pooling simulation to pull your system from uh, react reactants to product state through some kind of uh, transition state, and then uh, on top of that pooling simulation, in some points, you can do also uh, umbrella sampling simulation and thus find the free energy profile of your reaction, including some point near the transition state. But exact transition state for now for the QMMM system, no, it is not capable to do. But there will be some methods in the future which we are allowed to do that, which we are planning to implement, like magic elastic band, for example, for searching transition states. Yeah. But for now, only umbrella something. Great, thank you. Um, so our penultimate question is to do with um, where can one find instructions for how to build this uh, coupled Gromax CP2K? <laughs> yes, uh, it already was such a question where it will be available. So I, I probably already answered to that. So once there will be a, a release version of Gromax 2021, I guess I will just make a separate branch on the Gromax GitLab uh, with uh, interface, uh, with active interface, which everyone could download and test themselves. And there will be, of course, the instructions in the readme file how to, 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 to build it, sure. Yeah. But to do so, I can say now that first you will need to be able to compile yourself a CP2K, which is already not so straightforward procedure. <laughs> Thanks. And our final question um, is to do with a specific system. Um, mm -hmm. um, Neda would like to know about metal ions and ligands, such as uh, HEM. Um, mm -hmm. Is CP2K a good method, or um, mm -hmm. I see the point. Uh, so yeah. Is CP2K a good method, or uh, sh should something else be used to evaluate the bi biological mechanisms in? Uh, so, so yeah, yeah the, the, the answer is the following. So CP2K is initially created as a tool for the metals. <laughs> so I mean, it is came from the material science. So yes, it definitely can manage to uh, to, to calculate metals for you. Uh, the only thing is that uh, for the metals, usually you need a, a big different basis set to be used than the normal uh, basis set we are, we are using now. Uh, so if you go to the CP2K uh, uh, CP2K uh, web page and you check, uh, so if you can do that, but for that most probably to get the correct, correct and uh, conversion results for the metals, you need to provide your own CP2K input with with a basis set for your metal, with a pseudo potential for your metal, because usually metals use also pseudo potential uh, and so on. Yeah. But yeah, this interface is definitely possible. You just need to do additional effort to to know which uh, method you want to use for your metal, which which method and which basis set, which DFT functional will be best for your particular metal ion in biological system. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, before we finish, uh, Arno has asked me to uh, mention uh, that. Uh, People and anyone who's attended here um, and attended this talk or listened to this talk and has any questions about using Gromax with CP2K, uh, there is a, a forum on uh, ask.bioexcel.eu 
uh, where you'll find a section uh, entitled QMMM for biomolecular simulations. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions there. That's what the forum is for. Uh, I also wanted to very briefly mention that there are a couple of um, interesting webinars soon uh, coming soon to the BioXL webinar series. Uh, uh, yeah, so starting next year. Uh, first, we have the student webinar. Uh, on the 18th of January, uh, where um, some of the uh, students attending the winter school um, will be giving talks about uh, the um, about the work that they've been doing. Um, and also, we wanted to mention that there is currently ongoing as part of BioXL uh, a QMMM best practice uh, workshop, uh, and there is a webinar for that on the 10th of December. So that's this Friday, I believe, uh, Thursday, um, where uh, Professor Maria Ramos will be talking about uh, studies on enzyme-catalyzed enzyme reactions. Uh, and then also, come February, there will be more um, BioXL webinars to come, some of which have already, we, we already know who the speakers will be, but we've not quite set the dates, so please follow this space and um, to to find out about those. Finally, I'd like to thank Dimitri again for this very interesting talk um, and thank everyone for coming to this talk. Um, and I hope you all have a good day. Thank you.